Hello, this is Ken from the Computer Clan, here today to show you a demo of OS X Mavericks. This is a developer preview of the next version of OS X, and it is running on a new generation MacBook Air, the model that was released just a week ago, actually at the same time that Mavericks was announced. So just to show you, we'll go to about this Mac. It is Mac OS X version 10.9. That is Mavericks. And as you can see, we also have the nice default wallpaper, which I really like, the Wave. And everything is looking good. So... Before we really get started, Mavericks mainly focuses on power users. There's power user features and also enhancing performance and saving battery life. Now, I haven't done a bunch of extensive tests with this MacBook Air since I actually just received it probably an hour ago. But Mavericks is focused on saving battery life by using technologies like AppNap. So we'll show you some things like that. So first, I'd like to show you just some changes with the Finder. If you know some of these, it may be a little bit redundant, but it's still nice to see. So... The Finder, a few things have changed. For example, you can actually take the app full screen now, which is really nice, so you can have that on a separate display. Or separate desktop, I should say. But you actually can have it on a separate display in full screen now inside Mavericks. But one of the cooler things about Finder is not just the fact that it can go full screen, but the fact that it can use tabs. So I just opened a few tabs. Let's say I want to go to my desktop. And let's say I want to open up a new tab, Command-T, and then go to my Applications. And then let's say I want to go to my documents. So now I have all these tabs that I can just switch between up here. And you, you will notice the finder also got some subtle interface changes. Like when you select something, there's these rounded sides here and the bar across the top here has this white finish. And you can also do dragging and dropping. So let's say I want to take Game Center and I want to put an alias on the desktop. I can just drag it over the desktop tab and plop it in. So now I have a Game Center alias right on my desktop. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. So those are tabs. There's also tagging, which you can get to from the sidebar here. If you have files tagged with these certain tags, they will all show up in here. You can even color code them. So let's open up text edit. As you will see there, there's a new launchpad animation. So let's open up text edit. And we'll make a new file. We'll just say test. And when we go to save this, so let's do a save, what we can actually do is not just give it a name and location, but we can give it a tag. So we can use one of these existing tags, or I can make a new one. Let's just say demo. We'll create a new tag, call it demo. And we'll just save this to our documents for now. You can save it to the iCloud. And we'll call the document test. So now... There is a new demo tag in the sidebar here. So also, if you have the document open, you can click this little triangle up here and change your tags as well as the name and the location. You can also lock the file if you want to as well. And it's just in this nice little popover. Another thing you will notice across the system is a difference with the interface for certain things, like skeuomorphism is gone in most applications. If you don't know what that is, it's taking real-world objects and making those the interface, like the calendar actually looked like a calendar inside previous versions of OS X, but not anymore. It actually has this nice, continuous scrolling interface. It doesn't actually look like a calendar. There's no leather or stitching, you will notice. There's also no linen inside Notification Center. There's no linen inside the folders for Launchpad. So, skeuomorphism is dying. It's still in a few apps, but those are probably going to get changed soon. While we're in the calendar, I'd like to show you the new Inspector. It has a nice new interface. And you can add locations... And what the location will do is it will factor in your driving time and add that onto the date and time of your appointment. So let's say you have it scheduled for 9 a.m. It will say, oh, leave at 840. It's 20 minutes of driving. And it will even tell you the weather if you have a location in there. So it will tell you the weather and your driving time, which is really nice. And once again, just a very nice constant scrolling interface. Very beautiful. No skeuomorphism here. All right, so let's close that. Safari got some pretty awesome changes. This is Safari version 7. As you can see, we have a nice new Top Sites interface. Very clean. And you can even have this sidebar here, which shows you your reading list and your bookmarks. And you can have this open even while you're browsing. So let's say I want to go to the Apple website here. Let's say I go to the new Mac Pro page. And I'm just browsing the web. So I can still go to my Top Sites page and get the sidebar and Top Sites. And I can go back. So while I'm browsing, I can actually go to Show Sidebar. And this can stay open while I browse. 
So I can just keep going between different pages here, go back and forth, navigate, and this will always stay open. So if I want to get to something, I just click it, scroll to whatever I want to read, and launch it from the sidebar. Man, that's an old article. So that's a cool thing in Safari, and there's other subtle changes too. So Safari also has some under-the-hood changes where it does perform faster with JavaScript, and it's also more power-efficient. We'll get into that when I talk about more of the AppNap features and things of that nature. So we'll close out of Safari here. While we're on the topic of AppNap, I will demonstrate what that is. There is a new activity monitor, and that actually talks about AppNap. So let me open up some other applications here. Let's say Airport Utility, Fontbook, Grapher. Going to perhaps open up some other apps like Calculator, maybe Safari, and Preview. Okay, so we have quite a few apps open. And what AppNap will do is when an application is being covered up, let's say it's running something intensive and it gets covered up, those resources will actually be preserved to increase battery life and increase performance. And when you move the window away, the application will come out of AppNap and resume immediately. So it saves battery life and boosts performance. Your battery meter will even indicate what apps are using the most power right now. So for example, Spotlight was using quite a bit of power because it was indexing, and QuickTime is using quite a bit of power because I'm actually running a screen recording at the same time. Okay, so we have this HD video running in Flash now. So Safari, as the activity monitor will indicate, is using 27% energy impact, or I'm assuming that's a percent. QuickTime is using 54 because I am running a screen recording. So that is pretty efficient. It tells you what applications are using more power. So Safari right now isn't in AppNap because it's running a more intensive process. It's running that HD flash video, and it's at 2.7% energy impact. But now if we switch to this window and we actually watch the video, it jumps up to 23%. So the energy impact while watching the HD video is at 23, and when the window is covered up, it drops down to around 2 or 3. So it tells you when it is more efficient on the battery. So that's pretty efficient. So let's see, Fontbook is in AppNap, so it's using basically no resources. But if we click into it, then you will see it will come out of AppNap. There we go. Mavericks will also use compressed memory which, without blowing anybody's mind, it's basically compressing inactive memory to allow free memory to be instantly available to the system so your RAM behaves faster at the software level. And actually, in the activity monitor, near memory pressure, it will tell you how much compressed memory there is. So that's pretty efficient too. So that combined with AppNap, it really helps speed up the system, especially on these slower MacBook Airs. But it is really important to have more battery life, especially on these, and you can get about 12 to 13 hours on the 13-inch model. There are some new applications in Mavericks. Mavericks will have an iBooks application similar to how it is on iOS, but that will be downloadable through the App Store. One app I am going to show is Maps. It is a new built-in application. And it works a lot like the iOS version. You can use multi-touch gestures, you can rotate with your fingers, pan with two fingers, and you can even take it full screen. So you can browse through places, get turn-by-turn -turn directions, look up businesses. And let's say I want directions here. Let's say we go from Moscone Center to Palo Alto. It will give us turn-by-turn -turn directions and show us on the map here. So you can use the turn-by-turn -turn directions right on the computer, or you can even share the maps directly to your iPhone so you have them when you need to go. And of course, we can turn on flyover so let's get out of our directions mode go to flyover and zoom into the beautiful city of san francisco and here we go and we'll go to hybrid so we do get that awesome 3d view that has been on ios for quite some time and we can use that right on the computer so let's say there's a business i want to look up i'll just pan around with my fingers let the images all load up looking nice here's a gas station for example I can click the info button and get one of those stylish business cards. So that is pretty convenient. Nice popovers and a nice sidebar interface for turn-by-turn -turn directions and a nice 3D flyover view. So that is Maps inside of OS X. Earlier I was talking about skeuomorphism. Let's take a look at Notes. Notes has a much flatter and cleaner interface 
It's kind of like what Apple is doing with iOS 7. So you don't have that leather or that stitching everywhere. It's a lot more simplistic than it was in the previous versions. I haven't noticed any different features, but I have noticed the fact that skeuomorphism is gone, which is pretty nice because that was a big complaint for OS X Lion and Mountain Lion applications. So Mavericks will take care of that problem. Don't you worry. So that's a quick look at some of the things I can actually demo in Mavericks. There are some other things like iCloud Keychain. iCloud Keychain lets you sync passwords over the air. And there's other features like multiple display support that has been improved. For example, if I take applications full screen like I was talking about earlier, if you had dual displays, you could only have one full screen app at a time. But with multiple displays, you can have different desktops and pan between them independently. So those are some nice changes. You can also access the menu bar and the dock on secondary displays and other displays as well. So, that is a quick look at Mavericks. There's more coming in the future, most likely, because this is just the first developer preview. And I hope you enjoyed. Videos are just the beginning. Check out these other great websites for great content from the Computer Clan, and subscribe for more great videos from Real Deal Productions.